From the newsroom at news.com.au. G'day, I'm Andrew Bucklow. And I'm Lexi Cartwright. And this is the latest from the newsroom. It's Tuesday the 6th of October. We'll start in the US where President Donald Trump, who's still recovering from the coronavirus, has urged Americans to get out there and not let the disease dominate their lives. On the way back from the hospital before entering the White House, Mr Trump removed his face mask and filmed a 90-second long message which he posted online a short time later. Have a listen. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're going to beat it. I went, I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. The current coronavirus death toll in the US is 215,000. Back home now and the Morrison government is set to deliver one of the most important budgets since World War II today. The winners of the budget will be taxpayers. Anyone paying tax is set to receive money back in their pockets, but the largest amounts will likely go to those earning more than 90,000 bucks. And then, of course, there's the losers as well. For big businesses, there's no sign of any company tax cuts on the horizon, although the government is ploughing billions into funding infrastructure and manufacturing. You can check out all the budget news from 7.30pm onwards at news.com.au. To other news now, and surgeons have made an unexpected discovery in an Australian woman's brain during a surgery. The 25-year-old barista had suffered headaches for about seven years and was scheduled in for surgery to remove a possible tumour that had showed up on an MRI scan. But during the operation, surgeons discovered it was not a tumour, but, oh, get this, rather a cyst full of tapeworm larvae. That is repulsive. Uh, Did she die? No, Bucky. She actually made a full recovery, but after seeing the pictures of it, I have not. Well, you can check out the photos on news.com.au. I'm going to change your phone background to those. To entertainment news now, and it's been revealed that 2004 Australian Idol runner-up Anthony Kalia had a death threat made against him right before the grand final. Yeah, Kalia spoke about the terrifying incident on a new podcast hosted by Mark Holden and his daughter Katie called The Idol Archives. Have a listen to this. So it was hand-delivered to the house and it was essentially if Anthony won the grand final, um, he would be killed. And I was just like, great. Um, so <laughs> they, I, yeah, they brought the police to the house and they flew my parents up from Melbourne with a security guard. They put them in a hotel just to be safe. And then basically leading up to that grand final, everywhere that I went, I had to have a bodyguard. Yeah, during the grand final, a man was detained by security after jumping from the balcony to the stage where Kali was standing. They never found out if it was the same person who had made the threat against him. Ooh, to sport now, where South Sydney co-owner Russell Crowe may be dragged into the scandal engulfing good friend and former Rabbitoh star Sam Burgess. Crowe may have to front the NRL Integrity Unit to answer questions about the explosive allegations levelled against Burgess, who has stood down from his roles as a media commentator with Fox Sports and a development coach with the Bunnies. Burgess's lawyer has vigorously denied the accusations, which included claims of domestic violence and substance abuse. Well, that's it from the newsroom. We'll be back with another update in the morning. Your headlines from news.com.au.